The band Diamond Rio was founded in 1982, performing at the Opryland Theme Park in Nashville, Tennessee. They had gone through many changes as a group before landing their record deal in 1991 on Arista Records. And right from the start, they were at the top of the charts where they stayed for more than a decade. We had all this new stuff that none of us had ever experienced. And it seemed like it just didn't stop. It just kept mm. coming, kept coming, you know, one right after the other. In 2001, Don and Rio would once again be at the top of the charts enjoying crossover success with their song, One More Day, a song that many would turn to to grieve the passing of legendary NASCAR driver Dale Earnhardt in the tragic events of 9-11. That song was so powerful to us, and then it seemed like it, it applied to a love story to death mm -hmm. to uh, we heard people using it for their pets I mean <laughs> losing pets oh, God, and, yeah. I mean just yeah. just so many different situations today Diamond Rio has made some changes with two new additions to the group after two members retired their new song is called the kick and it's a full instrumental tune that shows off the band's musicianship the instrumental was was a process that mm -hmm. Jimmy really wanted. You know, hey, we got we want to engage this person, she, and and so she's learned mandolin now, and uh, and and the instrumental. And then when Micah heard it, he said, I want to do some stuff, Dan. And it just ended up being a whole a conglomeration between uh, all the band. from the John Deere stage. I'm Suzanne Alexander here on Music Row. And boy, you just saw some of their early hits, just song after song, a career that spans over three decades. Joining us in the studio, two members of the iconic band Diamond Rio. Welcome, Dana Williams and Marty Rowe. Good to be here. Oh, howdy, howdy. so good to have you guys here. Boy, iconic. Like I said, I, you, iconic. Is it, it's just, it, you know, listen, you got to own it. You know, when you talk about over three decades, it is an incredible, Is that better than career. legendary? Yes. <laughs> I think, you know, they're one and the same. I think yeah, I guess they interchangeable. are, yeah. I, I just, I just adore you guys. I always have, and I'm so glad to have you in the studio. Before we get going, I really wanted to get um, serious right off the bat. Uh, can we talk hair? Sure. Early on in those, in those, those videos hair? we got to see. Yeah, we saw uh, me in the middle. And I'd like to talk hair. It's you know, I mean, too my... expensive to get it back. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, the, the long hair, and I always thought, you know, of course, you, Dana, I know you had the long hair, Marty, the it. curls. I always thought, wow, you had a beautiful head of hair. Thank how you. much, how high maintenance was that? I know a lot of women going. It, it yeah. was a trip to Ramon of California's and a perm. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I yeah. got a perm in the back half of mine, you know. Isn't that called uh, is party when, in the back? This is back when mullets were yep. supposed to be Business cool. Business in the yeah. front, and <laughs> party in the back. I <laughs> permed the back so that I wouldn't have to do anything except just wash it and rock. And you did. Yeah. And, you, and, and that you, was it. And you wore it well. <laughs> you know, I got to talk about, of course, getting back uh, to these first hits that we just saw. Right out of the gate, I mean, you guys hit right from the get-go, well, number one song, platinum selling records, award, awards after awards. What was it like? We get a lot of artists that sit here on this set and talk about those early days when it takes off that fast. For you guys, where were you in all of that when you look back? Boy, I, you know, we didn't know anything different, for mm -hmm. one thing. Um, we, you know, it wasn't, uh, everybody told us we were hoping for top 20. Uh, for our first single debut, top ten would be fantastic. Um, and when it went number one, yeah, it was uh, cool, you know. Yeah. And, and it was and, freaky. Uh, and really didn't know any different. And and I guess um, it was, it, yeah, lots of new things. You know, uh, never knew what a meet and greet was until mm. then. And 
It's like lots, baptism by fire, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, lots I mean, more shows yeah. than nobody we warned us of a meet and greet. You know, no, yeah. they, nobody warned us. Of that. <laughs> Some people may not know meet and greets because I know you know a lot of. Day, I don't think they. I don't know oh, if they do they it as know. much today. Yeah. But back then, you had a. You would perform, and then you'd go back and have all of the fans that had VIP sure. or whatever and fan the club. Hotter, and, the, the more popular the, your record was, mm. the more folks want to come back. Yeah. Right. And radio uh, stations would be there, and they would have their guest winners and things like that. And and of course, um, you know, starting out, um, radio visits during the day, stopping right. by and talking, you know, like we are here, and and talking about your new product and who you are and introducing yourself and. We, we went through, being a band, went through the whole idea, well, do we uh, do all six go? Does just one or work, two yeah. go? Whatever. Um, and uh, so they were nice enough to settle on sending me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, but yeah, it was a lot of new stuff. And um, do you know, it was really, really exciting also. Yeah, I it mean, had to be. Yeah. We had all this new stuff that none of us had ever experienced. Mm. You know, going to radio uh, stations and going to television studios like this and playing these big shows with big audiences and with lots of other artists. And, and then came award shows and you're just kind of in awe of what's happening to you. And then uh, the first time we won uh, an award, I swear to you, I got up there and we're <laughs> standing there holding that award and... I honestly felt like my knees were going to buckle right right there and right on that stage, you know. Just so much stuff happening, and it seemed like it just didn't stop. It just kept mm. coming, kept coming, you know, one right after the other. And uh, It was an uh, interesting phenomenon, though. <laughs> after the first award, you know, a pinnacle, and Jimmy and I were sitting in the hotel room afterwards late at night, Parties over is well, actually early in the morning in L.A. and uh, and he's just kind of sitting there and he goes, so that's it, huh? <laughs> so he said, what's next? And I said, do it again. Right, and, and that's interesting <laughs> that you say that because I always wondered, like, had you known, you know, because you guys at this, for people who may not know your story, you have been playing music for years sure. prior to landing on Arista Records. Right. You were under a different name and then, you know, different formation. Of course, what we're missing, Brian Proud, uh, Gene Johnson, uh, Dan Truman, uh, who else? Uh, Jimmy Olander, of course. So the six of you really coming to Nashville and landing that deal, thinking prior to all of that happening, was it what you thought it would be? Man, I don't know. I never thought ahead. I just, mm. you know, we're making music and and trying to make a living doing that and making records. Hearing your hearing yourself on the radio, mm. that was the big deal. Winning an award, <laughs> giving a speech. I used to dream about giving, because I watched award shows growing up and giving a speech. And I remember daydreaming on a tractor, literally, um, about, you know, the great, how I could change the world with my acceptance speech, whatever. And then I'm standing up there, I don't remember what I said. Yeah. Pretty yeah. much ever. You look back. Thank God, thank the record company. You know, right. you remember you have your bullet points. <laughs> thank the fans. Actually, several performances into it, it finally became, I think maybe Reba even said it to me. She might have been hosting at that time. Anyhow, she, but it was like, you know, all of us in the industry, because you're, you're, here's your, I mean, it's Reba McIntyre on the front row, George Strait, whatever, right. you know. And, Legends sitting there, and you're scared to death. And they, she's like, "We are the one bunch that is pulling for you, mm. because we, you know, you at that moment you're representing all of us." I was like, "Well, thanks a lot." <laughs> no but, pressure. But the same time, you do know it, you people are the ones freaking <laughs> us out. <laughs> it really, it really, it was comforting. To, it, it was a different perspective, and it it caused me to be able to make eye contact with all my friends and mm. peers in the business they or whatever, and actually mm -hmm. perform it. And mm. instead of kind of, you know, get over with and go, Did that, was that okay? You know, right. yeah. it's really, really hard. It's interesting that you said that because knowing, of course, that you guys were here, I was going back th through some old footage and it was an ACM award. Reba was on stage about to introduce you guys to performing and said, you were the first band whose debut song went to number one and she brought you out and the crowd went wild. So it was interesting that you brought that out because I, like that lives online. They can't take us, take that from us ever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. We, we got that 
that one. They may match it, but they can't, can't take, take it. it away. Can't take it away. <laughs> Stay with us. A lot more here on the record. Hanging out with Marty Rowe and Dana Williams of Diamond Rio. And so then it became a tradition that every video, <laughs> if he's playing the piano, there's a donut. Welcome back to you on the record. Brand new music from Diamond Rio. That song called The Kick, hanging out with Dana Williams, Marty Rowe. By the way, of course, a lot of folks can jump onto YouTube, see your videos, and boy, video after video, which... By the way, speaking of, I want to present you and surprise you here. Presented to Diamond Rio for passing 100,000 subscribers How about on that? YouTube. So How this about that? is yours. Congratulations. Yes, indeed. I don't, hopefully you got more than one because you're all going to just have to share it, I guess. Uh, yeah, we're used to that. <laughs> used to yeah. that. Yeah, that started with the first gold record. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not complaining, believe me. Yeah. You know, I talked cool. earlier, you know, uh, uh, about the longevity before the break. Guys don't, you know, it's hard, right? We see duos, we see bands, they just don't make it. I feel with you guys, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it, with every album that you had done instrumentals on, really kind of show the, the versatility, the talent that you guys had. Not a lot of guys played their own instruments on the recordings in the studio, which you guys did. Was it the mutual respect that really kind of kept you guys together like that? Part of it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, every individual, uh, I, of course, I've been here for the, all the member changes. Mm -hmm. And every time someone would decide that they needed to move on, it was, it was a downer. I mean, it was uh, because a crucial part. And, and then when we would find somebody new, it actually was, ooh, a new a new nuance to the sound mm. and I, not to knock anybody, but it really was seemed better. And by the time Jana came along, we had Gene who was singing all this high harmony and I'm, you know, we had another lead singer. I sang the low part and, uh, and he had quit. So I was singing lead now. He comes in and they're both from the bluegrass background. I mean, mm. like that. And, you know, what is it you call yourself? What's your nickname? Well, he's like, do we want to tell this on television? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, but the, not the missing link. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but um, he, yeah, but it was um, so each member change was awesome. And mm. and but we had been working and and kind of starving together, to be honest with you, yeah. and pursuing different producers who have already gone two or three. Um, and like I said, we started out with a I wasn't a lead singer, and, and then that changed, yeah. and, and having a piano and a bender guitar and a mandolin all together, we didn't come up with that. It just happened yeah. organically, and, and it was a very unique instrumental sound before the vocals ever came around. Yeah. New instrumental, the kick we just yeah. saw. The kick, Jimmy? how about that, the Jimmy? Idea behind that one? Yeah. Jimmy and, uh, and Carson McKee. We're talking about new members. Talking about new members. Before we get here. to talk about Micah and Carson, I do have to say, knowing that Gene and Brian were going to retire from the band, I can't imagine. Was it something that you guys had been talking about, or was it they both came in together and said, "Listen, how did that they all?" They kind of let us know ahead of time. Yeah. Brian did but, first, you know, kind of mm -hmm. give us a date, and then uh, yeah, Brian had been talking about it. Yeah. That's a nice way of saying it. Um, for several years, threatening, talking, whatever. <laughs> but um, yeah, he his and the drumming is a very the most physical part of yeah. what we do. And his his wrists, mm -hmm. he'd had surgeries, and his Sorry. elbows, and and um, and he is and Gene both are a few years older than us, and a little further on in their life cycle. And and so he decided to do that first. And Gene had no intention of mm -hmm. of retiring. His wife became very ill with cancer and so he stayed home for a year with her as she was trying to recover uh she unfortunately did not make it mm. through all that and when that was over with he had he decided that uh he'd been off for a while yeah. and i and i don't know if he liked it or not but i he decided it was his time to move on also yeah. and so we weren't ready you know, the four of us weren't ready to quit yet. So we had Micah. He was already there. Kind of filling I, in. Yeah, yeah, he was filling yeah. in for Brian, you know. And, so kind of a natural transition then, in yeah, a way. While Gene yeah. was out with his wife, you know, we had 
several. went through several different people mm. filling in that year, and uh, we fell on Carson, and she just uh, really just fell into the, the mix, man, yeah. and just no doubt. really sparked everybody. Micah sparked everybody, and uh, uh, we offered it to uh, Carson and Micah, and they both jumped on it, and uh, and now we have a female on the bus. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. brand new. It's an <laughs> well, you know, essentially a lot of people who have been following Di Maria, right? We know Gene hits those high harmonies, and we go, "Who's gonna? How? How does that work?" Well, you had to get a girl. Yeah, I had to, to get to a girl. Jump in so, for Gene, yeah. which is, but and that's another whole other aspect. Well, you guys have been doing this on the road for so long. You have a female on the bus now. Totally different world. As a woman, I cannot imagine traveling with all men. I will say that from her defense on her side. We are very respectful. <laughs> we, and so is she. Yeah. She, said, she, uh, she claims she has four fathers on the bus. Yeah, that's Maybe awesome. Maybe grandfathers, I don't know. <laughs> she's, she's 24. Wow. And, uh, but what and, new energy, new vibe, yeah, absolutely. and just the a whole, whole new thing. thing. Yeah. And she's like a sponge. She really wants to uh, advance and make this her living. She was, you know, Magna cum laude or that UK, I mean, really, mm -hmm. very, very smart, yeah. In finance, and she had a job waiting on her here in Nashville, but um, her passion was music, and we gave her the opportunity. She chose she meet in the middle it. instead. She sure did. <laughs> and I, I think she's enjoying it, but uh, yeah, the instrumental was was a process that mm. Jimmy really wanted. You know, hey, we got we want to engage this person, she, and and so she's learned mandolin now, and. Uh, and and the instrumental and then when Micah heard it he said I want to do some stuff Dan and it just ended up being a whole a conglomeration between the, all the band um, mm -hmm. uh, with very limited vocals and uh, so that <laughs> you can say that <laughs> you can take that message Zero. for whatever you want but uh, <laughs> the video I have to say I watched it several times I feel like every time I watch it I see something new like what's with the Poppy seed bagel on Dan's piano. That's a tradition. Like, what is going on? Go back and watch well, Bubba Hyde. You'll, you'll see a yes. you'll see a donut there. Yes. <laughs> okay, because I'm saying I'm like, am a, I seeing what I'm seeing? It's seeing? a progression with age. It's more of a, a better for his diet. Than <laughs> the donut. right. <laughs> Donuts is a little too much sugar <laughs> now. Yeah, yeah. 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 moved into bagels. You have to eat while doing the actual video shoot, right? There's no crap well, service. Well, what happened? Yeah. The donut was left on there and no one paid attention to it in between takes and then it appeared and it was in all the cuts and so then it became a tradition that every video, <laughs> if he's playing piano, there's a donut there's some with kind of one food. bite taken yeah, out of it. There's food placement somewhere. Yeah. I'm having a blast. You guys stay around, of course. We're going to talk more about not only all the accolades that have come your way, but all that you guys have given back um, and doing so much humanitarian work. A lot more hanging out with two members, Dana Williams, Marty Rowe of Diamond Rio, here on The Record. Stay with us. That song transferred and to be able to have that on the market for people in those times was uh, very humbling. One more day, one more time, one more sunset, maybe I'd be satisfied. Welcome back to you on the record, boy, what a song that was. Yeah. Uh, Diamond Rio, One More Day. How much of a gift was that song? What, 2000, 2001, I think that Somewhere came? in there, yeah. yeah. It's a gift that kept on giving, that's yeah. for sure. We yeah. we had, you know, when we recorded it, it was, a, it was a love song. We loved it, and we knew that it should be a single. Um, and that's about it, you know. And it, early on, took on its own <laughs> life, and people we're applying it to different types of relationships mm -hmm. and just, you know, male, female, whatever, the, your your love interest. Um, it was, you know, Sean Parr was the first guy out of radio oh, out yeah. west, and he called or communicated with our label that he had that song, the first time he heard it, he actually left whatever work early or whatever and and went to eat lunch with his son he had been going through a divorce mm. and he went to school and just had lunch with his son and it's always been a memorable moment and he told us that and then in the spring of 01 it was already coming off the charts and uh, our friend Dale Earnhardt was killed in Daytona 500 in February and they used it they as a bed for you know, a tribute to Dale, 
And unfortunately, you know, 9-11 happened, and in that time period, we recut some stuff, and it went adult contemporary, and it just it stayed on the top five of that chart for almost a year, 36, eight weeks, something like that. Yeah. And it, yeah, to, it was amazing. <laughs> to think about the comfort that it brought for so many, really, a country that was grieving. Yeah. And starting with Dale, I, I know, Dana, you're a big NASCAR fan, and that, that had to be a, a very emotional moment for oh. you. But to know that your song, you know, a song that you delivered was something that was helping so many fans. It was just so... Um so kind of surreal i mean because yeah. that song was so powerful to us and then it seemed like it it applied to a love story to death mm -hmm. to uh we heard people using it for their pets i mean <laughs> losing pets oh, and, God, yeah. i mean just yeah. just so many different situations and then Horrible things like 9-11, and it was used so much for that and so much for Dale Earnhardt. I mean, they used it for uh, that Oklahoma uh, mm -hmm. basketball team that, that you know, yeah. just unbelievable. It just kept being used, you know, in those unbelievable situations, you know, and for us to. And then we did it on the CMA Awards. And they played all this video and stuff yeah, behind it. And loss, yeah. I'm telling you, that was a uh... powerful moment. That song transferred, and to be able to have that on the market for people in those times was uh, very humbling. And we have so many people still, every show, somebody wants to dedicate it, or they literally buy a ticket and have a picture of someone mm -hmm. with them in the front row. And that's happened many, many times. It's got to so. be so emotional. I you know, and, and I said this. Uh, again and again, and, I, and I, I, for me personally, Diamond Rio's music, you're like a, a timeline throughout my life. Uh -huh. I think each one of your songs, I think we can, as fans, remember where we were when your song came out, which is pretty incredible. So I thank you for mm. the music. Oh. And of course, all that you have given us and you continue to give. I wanted to talk about your humanitarian work. You've been recognized for all the work that you've done throughout the years. Big Brothers Big Sisters of Middle Tennessee. You helped us out many times. Well, I gotta say, these guys set me on the record, or set me on the path, I should say, to running. And I became addicted to running, thanks to you boys very much. <laughs> but. Um, uh, yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm, uh, I run a lot. <laughs> well, doing Team Rio, of course, with the, with the running and tournament. then having the golf tournament. Yeah, um, just, uh, yeah it, the it, golf tournament went for 19 years. Wow. Um, yeah. And then uh, we started, Jimmy uh, thought about doing the the Team Rio thing and because when we had, we, we started having the marathon here mm -hmm. in Nashville. And, and so we trained, we had three, four hundred people at, sometimes on our team and uh, raised uh, a lot of money. Yeah, and a that's, money. A, that's a big thank you to all the sponsors and the people, mm -hmm. our relationships with different corporations who were willing to bring their money to our cause. And that's a, that's a cool thing. It, was, it literally was a conscious uh, conversation we had yeah. early in our success that we had to, we were mm -hmm. very purposeful about finding something that we could have as an annual event to yeah. try to use our name and likeness to to raise money for a good cause. I like to say using your superpowers for good. What a pleasure. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for having us. Dana I just Williams, can't tell you. Marty Rowe, Diamond Rio. From the John Deere stage, this has been On the Record. We'll see you next time.